Our first question is going to come from Robert Allen of Triple Play Sports Radio. Go ahead, Robert. Yeah, Trace, uh, the difference between last year and maybe when the light clicked on for you and where you feel you are right now, because there's a lot of people bragging about the way you've been playing in the preseason. Uh, I think I've just matured a lot over the offseason. Uh, I've learned to like film and watch it and uh, learn what tackles do and what they do and how to make myself better. So I think that's just what I did. I just matured a lot more over the year. Because you played as a freshman, can you point back to at any point last season where you realize, you know, I, I can be pretty good. I, I'm feeling this pretty good. Uh, you said when? Yeah. Was there any point last season that the light kind of came on and you realized, you know what, I can be pretty good at what I'm doing here? I think after that first start in Iowa State, I started getting more confidence. I didn't. I liked the confidence last year, but once I started playing more and more, I started getting more confidence and saying, "Hey, I'm just as good as these guys out here." And that's how I think I felt. Thank you. Thanks, Trace. Our next question comes from Scott Wright of the Oklahoman. Go ahead, Scott. Hey, Trace, with a uh, with a mom in the uh, in the medical field. Uh, what have been uh, kind of what's been her communication to you about uh, you know taking care of yourself during this time and and uh, what are her thoughts on uh, on on this season going forward? I mean, she's obviously concerned. She tells me to wash my hands every thirty minutes, so she's definitely concerned about it. But I already had it. She knows I'm safe. I live alone. She knows I I social distance. She knows I want to play. So she's not she's not concerned for me. She knows I'm doing the right taking the right precautions to stay safe. How many people in your family got sick? Uh, I think just me. Was it just you? Yeah, just me. What was uh, what was that experience like for you? Uh, I had the the symptoms: the no taste, no smell, the headaches, the sweat, the the chills. It, it was it was pretty tough, but I got over it. Here I am now, so it's all good. All right, thanks, Trace. Is there? Question. Joseph Fazio of the Ocali. Go ahead, Joseph. Trace, we're seeing a lot of different stuff happening structurally-wise from last year, this year. How perceptive do you think you and your teammates have been, you know, going off all the Zoom stuff, having to socially distance during practice, making sure you wash your hands all the time and stuff like that? Say that one more time. I'm sorry. It's out of here. Um, there's a lot of different stuff going on structurally compared from last year to this year. How well do you think the players and yourself have been receiving that with stuff like online Zoom calls, socially distancing during practice, making sure to wash your hands and all that stuff? It's definitely been more tough, especially with the Zoom calls and stuff. It's harder to like pay attention and like get the, the correct learning you need because it's obviously not in person. So it's harder to like demonstrate. But I think we've done a good job with it, keeping our mask on in the weight rooms and washing our hands. There's hand sanitizer everywhere. So I think we've been doing real good with it. It's been difficult, but it's it's been workable. And this year, there's only going to be 25% of the capacity at BPS. There's not going to be as many cheering fans as there were last year. Do you think that's going to have an effect on how you and your teammates play? Uh, I, I hope not. Our, our intensity is pretty pretty intense at practice. We get into it. We have fun. And I think – I think it's just going to roll into the season. We don't need fans at the stadium to know that they're watching us. I think we're going to come with the same heat that we have at practice and roll in and win. All right. Thanks, Trace. This question comes from Cody Nagel of Go Pokes. Go ahead, Cody. Cody, I think you're on mute. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah. Yes, sir. I guess it sounds like you had quite the off season. Um, can you tell us about the workouts that you had to to bulk up and put on some more weight? Yeah. So I, I just started uh, started eating a lot more. I was eating chicken and rice and broccoli for like lunch and dinner. I was making sure I ate three to four times a day, three to four meals a day. I was making sure to take every chance I could in the weight room and get bigger and better, faster and stronger on the weekends. I did. I worked out. So I never got really gave myself a break, and I think that's where I got myself here today. Did you notice any, I guess, after you got on the virus, did you notice any setbacks after that, or do you feel like you've, I guess, kept on that, that added weight? 
Uh, I, I've definitely lost a lot of weight over Corona. Uh, yeah, I'm weighing like 240 right now. So I've only lost about eight pounds, but I definitely got more out of shape. It's been harder to breathe and stuff. I'm, I'm slowly getting back in better and better shape every day. But yeah, it's, Corona definitely took a toll on my body for sure. Got a little weaker, but I'll be back. I'll be fine. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Next question comes from Frank Bonner of the Tulsa World. Go ahead, Frank. Hey, Trace, if you had to pinpoint one one aspect of your game that you, you focused on the most this offseason, what would that be? I'm sorry, say that one more time. If you had to pinpoint what aspect of your game you focused on the most to improve this offseason, what aspect would that be? I think it's my uh, physicality, uh, just getting stronger and bigger, putting my hands on the tackles and tight ends without being afraid to try to run around them. I think I'm definitely coming this year with more physicality and, and coming in the pocket and hitting people. I think that's what I focused on over the season. Is anybody um, – I know obviously you weren't probably able to work out like you would with, with other people. Were, were there anybody who kind of helped uh, coach you up on, on, on working on that this offseason? Yeah, so um, I, have a, I have a close friend that played football in the league, and he, uh, we, just, we went out, got cleats on, and did, did stuff every day. So, I mean, yeah, he definitely helped me. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right, last couple questions here for Trace. Our next question is going to come from Jacob Unruh of the Oklahoman. Go ahead, Jacob. Trace, how's it going, man? What about you? Good, it's been a while. <laughs> hey, um, kind of a recruiting question. Um, recruiting is different right now, obviously, than what you went through. Um, can't have people on campus and stuff like that. How important do you think it is to for recruits to kind of recruit each other during something like this? Oh, I think it's really important. Uh, I think it's really important because, like, they obviously can't get up here. They don't know what it's like, so they need uh, they need help from other people to tell them what it's like and how they how they feel it is, and just bounce off ideas from each other. Do you think, go ahead? Yeah. No, sorry. Uh, do you do you kind of help recruit too? I mean, the players got to recruit other players at this point too, right? Is that something that's happening? <laughs> I mean, I definitely, I definitely talk to the Santa Fe boys. Uh, yeah. I, I tell them how great it is up here. You know, go post and all. But I mean, I guess I recruit them. <laughs> <laughs> um, another another kind of off topic. Did, you know, you said you had the symptoms and and COVID this summer. Did you ever consider not playing? Did you ever consider opting out? Well, I was I was definitely worried about my dad, you know, my family, like with, with uh, medical conditions. So obviously, I took it into thought, but I realized you can get the Corona in Edmond. You can get it here. I feel like I'm safer in the stadium than I am anywhere else. I feel like they take the precautions to keep me safe. So I trust them. Then, so I I, I want to play. So I'm here. Awesome. Thanks, Trace. All right, our last question for Trace is going to come from Sam Hutchins of the Ocali. Go ahead, Sam. Hey, Trace. Uh, now that you're going into your second year, you've gotten to see a new group of players come in behind you defensively. How do you feel about the depth on the defensive side of the ball this year? And how important do you think depth will be this year? You know, maybe because lack of conditioning or just a crazy year in general. Oh, depth, depth is deep this year for sure, especially at the Leo position. Uh, so I know I'm out of shape for sure. All, we all are, and we have plenty of freshman linebackers that came in and can easily step up if they need to. We got Tyron Irby at Leo, who's definitely playing lights out. So yeah, I'm competing with him every day just to keep my spot. And yeah, I, I think depth is a real, real big factor, and I think we have it right now for defense. Is there any incoming freshman that you've been especially impressed with so far? Uh, defense or offense? Uh, I guess defense. Uh, you'd probably know about <laughs> that. Uh, Jabbar, uh, that dude, that dude lights out. That dude's fast. He can run around the field. He's making plays all the time at practice. I've definitely noticed him out there for sure. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right, Trace. Thank you so much. We really do appreciate you taking the time. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thanks. Have a good night. You too. Chris, how are you doing? How you doing? Good, doing well, thanks. Uh, we've got about 15 members of the media on the call here. And so what we'll do is we'll have just each of them kind of have their questions individually, okay? All right. 
All right, so our first question is gonna come from Frank Bonner of the Tulsa World. Go ahead, Frank. Can you hear me? Okay, we got you. Frank. Yeah, I just wanted to ask, uh, how has this off season been for you, um, you know, trying to, to hone on your skills with not being able to have the usual access with the pandemic? Uh, just with everything going on, I think all the athletes, all the uh, college players, even NFL players in the world, know that I take a different approach um, to this offseason. So just try to focus, uh, do what we can do, uh, sit around until we have access to work out. But most of the time, this offseason, a lot of players have to work out on their own. So that's what I did a lot, utilize the track here, just try to do what I can to stay in shape until I was ready to go with the team. Do you feel like you're more in a groove now, now that, you know, you guys have an opponent that you're preparing for in Tulsa and, and, oh, and looking more normal? Most definitely. Um, most definitely. Now we got direction. Um, a lot of the guys were ready. Uh, everybody's working and everybody's looking forward to the season. Appreciate it. Our next question comes from Robert Allen of Triple Play Sports Radio. Go ahead, Robert. Robert, I believe you're on mute. Yeah, I, I'm off. Uh, Christian, what made your mind up uh, with regards to when you knew you were going to transfer? What made your mind up to make it Oklahoma State? Uh, let's, let's go back in the memory bank. Uh, I think my, my mind was made up of what I wanted to prove uh, to myself and uh, to get more tape in my, uh, for my, you know, ability was to, you know, ball stone around a lot in the Big 12, came here. Uh, you think about what I was doing in Missouri. I loved it there, but around here, uh, you know, past, I don't know how many years you guys have been to a bowl game. So I want to be a part of a winning team and take the next step with this team. So that's what's doing me. Also, most. Yeah, I'm sorry. Also, you'd seen Oklahoma State in a bowl game. You see what happens in the Big 12 as a corner. How much fun is it to go out there, not only in games, but every day in practice, go against receivers that, I mean, seven on seven in, in practice is crazy, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it, it's crazy. You see the ball thrown around most. Uh, this is more, the most I've seen the ball thrown around since I probably put on a helmet. So it's crazy and it's fun. It's what every corner, uh, you know, dreams to do. So. Thanks, Christian. Right. Appreciate it, Robert. Our next question comes from Scott Wright of the Oklahoman. Go ahead, Scott. Christian, what do you think has allowed you to uh, to to blend in and uh, and become part of the uh, part of the culture there at Oklahoma State so quickly? Uh, really, just simple. Really, just the mindset all the players had here, and really the mindset the coaches had with just a winning mentality. Uh, you know, just something I've always. Uh, Dreamed about being part of something that Coach Oden still me in. And me with Coach Gundy and Eamon and the rest of the players, just it's easy to fit in with them guys because we all have the same goal. So it, it really was very simple to fit in with them. Last thing, why uh, why number zero? I know you wore 21 at, uh, at Missouri, so that wasn't available. But uh, why, what led you to pick zero? Really, it was like it wasn't really any thought put into it. Uh, Barry Sanders, could, uh, you know, I shot him a message on Instagram to let me wear it, but you know, he's not looking at nothing like that. So zero really was just a new opportunity, a number available. So that's why I got it. There was no reason behind it. Good stuff. Thanks, bud. Our next question comes from Jason Elmquist of the Stillwater News Press. Go ahead, Jason. Thanks, Christian. Uh, going back to your decision-making of coming to Oklahoma State, how much did you look into or did it play an impact the fact that uh, Oklahoma State has had success with transfers, especially in the defensive secondary, come in and even go on to the, the next level, uh, obviously most recently, Kima Sivaran. Uh, that's a, uh, something Co um, Coach Gunny burned to my attention when we met. Uh, and then that's something my uncle burned to my attention, him doing his research, was the transfers coming here, how I can fit right in, how I can slide in, help the team right away, how I can help them with their goals. So I took a lot of heat into that, into my decision, too, once I found that out. Uh, and obviously, they, they they already had some some players and some starters returning, some guys who got some experience last year. But what was it that, that made you think that you can come here and, and, and make an immediate impact despite the fact that they had some depth kind of at that position right now? Um, really, uh, probably just talk about depth in the Big 12 where you got tempo, you got a lot of guys 
uh, going, going, going on offense. So it really dealt. I just knew in my ability, I can compete uh, with any receiver in my eyes. And I think that the team here, we have guys on, this, on defense, we have a lot of depth where I feel like I can just come in and contribute any way possible, whether that be special teams or anything. I just knew I can contrib contribute somehow. Thanks for your time. Not really. Our next question comes from Ben Hutchins of the Ocali. Go ahead, Ben. Hey, Christian. I'm just wondering, uh, how has the battle for the cornerback position been going? I mean, traditionally, a lot of cornerbacks have a lot of self-confidence. And I'm wondering, uh, does that element make the uh, cornerback battle a little bit extra dramatic? Uh, not dramatic at all. Um, everybody comes every day, every day. Everybody walks through the doors ready to work. So we just come in, compete, get better, grab each other when we down, high-five each other when we up. So that's what it is. I like that. And have you found that there's any difference between playing cornerback at Missouri and playing cornerback at Oklahoma State? Um, difference would be uh, playing on black and white, just the tempo. Appreciate it. Yep. Our next question comes from Jacob Unra of the Oklahoman. Go ahead, Jacob. Hey, Christian. Uh, I'm kind of curious. Coming over from Missouri, um, I don't know how much you got to watch OSU in the past and stuff. Was there someone on either side of the ball that's really kind of surprised you? Uh, he's my hero currently. Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, all over the ball. I was just talking to um, my old teammate, Demarcus Macy, about it last night. Actually, it's crazy. Uh, especially on defense and offense. Um, we got guys just a complete team here uh, from D line to middle linebackers, from O line to running backs. It's just you always you have depth. And I can see people on offense running with the third team that I know can run with the first team. So. It's depth all over here, and I'm really ready to see it this season. Yeah, thanks. All right, our final question is going to come from Scott Wright of the Oklahoman. Go ahead, Scott. Christian, what, uh, what's been different about the, the scheme of, of this defense under Jim Knowles? Has it been a, a complicated thing to, uh, to learn? Uh, not complicated. It's been these times where I have my brain farts, but with everybody around, they help me. They help me out getting the different emotions, the different uh, names we call things. It's really the same. Uh, play man. Uh, yeah, anything other than that, uh, I think I'm catching up on it pretty well. So you play a, a, a lot of the guys here are helping me out, so we're, we're going to be fine. Is there is there more man in this uh, in this system than what you're running at Missouri? Um, I want to. I want to say so. I feel like it's, it'll probably be even. All we did was play press man. Uh, here we got more of a, a scheme where it allows us to make more plays on the ball. But I like the scheme here. I feel like it fits me the best. I like definitely. Uh, Coach Noah is a smart guy. Fantastic. I like what he's doing. So I feel like it's about. It's, it's probably probably better. Probably more more man.